said to God, he said, you should pray like never before. God wants to do something on the earth. Not only in this ministry, around the globe. Great, great something that's going to shake the nations. Because Satan is increasing his evil wickedness. The Bible says when he come in, like a flood, the Lord will raise a standard. And that standard is within you. Give Jesus a hand. <laughs> Say to God, you, that standard is within you. That standard is God's word. In Jesus' name. When another church is suffering, I pray, I cry. Because we all run for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. But not everything that's called the church is a church. Okay? I'm very strong on that one. Every tree that my heavenly father did not plant will be uprooted. He didn't plant all the trees that you see. He planted trees that he planted. And they must prosper and flourish. And be a fruit. And fruit that lasts. And may the fruit be good in Jesus' name. Say to God, you run the race that is set before you. Amen? And then it says, the way to run this race, it says here, it's a comma, it's one sentence. It's not a different sentence. It says here, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Comma, not point, comma. Looking unto Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Now Jesus had his own race to run. And that was going to a cross. I tell you, it was not comfortable. But he didn't look only at the cross. He looked at the joy beyond the cross. Sometimes you need to do certain things that is not pleasing for you or comfortable. You should look beyond about to the joy that is set before you after that cross or whatever the thing is that you face that you dislike. Oh, Jesus. Have you faced things like that? I did. They're not nice. Things you need to face. Things that stand before you. Things sometimes, you, it's a horrible experience. But you look beyond. You look at the joy that lay behind that cup you need to drink. Not everything that you do in God's kingdom is comfortable or nice experience. But the bad experience or the negative experience doesn't last forever. Don't worry. Give God a hand. It doesn't. If they last forever, there's something terrible wrong. Amen? So difficulty, when we enter, we, will, we all go through the valley of the shadow of death. We all. But he says we go through. We do not get stuck in that valley. If you get stuck in that valley... Somewhere there's a problem. You need freedom. You need deliverance. Something is wrong. Say to God, you see, we don't get stuck in difficulty. We go through them. Jesus didn't remain on the cross, did he? Did he remain in the grave? How long was he there? Not that long. Okay, give God a hand. You need to go through. Jesus is the one who pulled you through. If you look unto him. The problem is most people do not look unto Jesus. They look at all sorts of nonsense by Jesus. Even Christians. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you sit in a financial distress for too long, something's wrong. We all face difficulty. But it should not be too long. then there's something wrong. We all face trouble. We all face trial, temptation. and We all go through the valley of the shadow of death. Every single one of us. But when they go on and they do not stop, something we do wrong. God is not to be blamed. We need to look unto Jesus and get advice and guidance from him. If a person comes to me and he says to me, he's still waiting for that and that thing that need to come through after five years, I say to him, you are talking nonsense. I 
Ask the guy next to you, how long was Jesus on that cross? How long was he in a grave? How long was he in the belly of the earth? Not too long. If you cannot pay your payments, something is wrong. The Bible says, oh, no one, nothing except to love them. Now you will immediately say, but I pay, I pay off my payments on my car, so I owe the bank. No, you made a deal with the bank. If you keep that commitment by paying every month the payment, you don't owe the bank nothing. You just stick to that agreement. I want to pray for you. Not condemn you. Get free. Amen? Oh, no, no, no one, nothing. Except to love them. He said, but I owe the bank. No, you made an agreement with the bank. You made a loan. You made an agreement that you pay them off. As long as you pay off that payment every month, you don't owe them nothing. Because you keep to your agreement. Pastor, should we make loans? Nothing wrong with that. As long as you keep to the agreement. Give God a hand. But don't pay, make too many loans. I mean, I don't like loans. I don't like those things. That's why I don't own nothing. There's one car I pay off. And it's actually meant for my wife. Now my child is riding with it. But that was for a purpose to stay in the market concerning vehicles. That's all. That's the only purpose. To be in the market concerning a modern vehicle. Because they lose their value, etc., etc. That's the only reason. That's the only debt I got. No, I've got another debt. It's to love you. Give God a <laughs> It's not wrong to go and make a loan. As long as you can keep to the commitment of paying the agreed payment. Amen? Amen. Give your Lord a hand. If you cannot, because where your God provides... Say, my God is my provider. Come on. You do not sometimes know where the next money is coming from. I've got news for you. I end with that. I preach too long. Listen. When Abram ascended that mountain with his beloved promised son, he now, God told him to sacrifice the son. Do you think it was easy? Huh? There's many things in a spiritual journey that's not easy. But he had to drink a cup. He didn't know God's going to give some, someone else to sacrifice. God said to him, take your son, your beloved son, and go and sacrifice him. And God knew what he said to him was not unfamiliar to Abram because he came from a culture where they did it. He came from a culture exactly where Iraq is now. Where they used, the custom was the way they used, it's an evil custom, but they did it. Where they used to sacrifice their oldest son to their evil gods. And Abraham came out of that country. So it was not an unfamiliar practice to him. And when this God whom he met now, his new God, I mean, whom he started to know now, asked him to sacrifice his son, he didn't think this God was playing. Because he's thinking back about the culture where he came from. He thought, oh, this God also wanted, oh, I waited so long for this one. God said, go and sacrifice him. It was not unfamiliar practice to him. Although he, he knew in his heart it was evil because that's why God called him. As the first Jew. When his son asked him, Dad, where's the sacrifice? Yes, the wood, yes, the fire. Where's the sacrifice? I think, very uncomfortable and crying in his heart and with great pain. He said, God will provide. Give God a hand. He said, God will provide. 
Sometimes you do not know where the next... If you're in God's will, He will never forsake you. If you're in His will, and if you're doing what He wants you to do, but you cannot sit and live in sin and think He's going to provide. He said, God will provide. With pain in his heart, my friend, don't you think for one second it was comfortable to that man. He was placing his own son. I wonder what, what went through that son's heart. What went through that father's heart? Many of you got children. You know how you love them. I've got two sons and a daughter. I tell you, I love them, man. I will, I will die for them. I'll give my life to them. And I can only think what went through that man's head and heart and emotion when he put the promised son, which he waited so long for, the beloved Isaac, on that altar. And he bound him with ropes. And he lifted the knife. Sha! Said to God, he said, sometimes the cup we need to drink is tough, but we need to look beyond. As Jesus went to the cross, do you think that cross was a comfortable something to look forward to? It was horrible because he knew at that cross he will be separated from the Father for the first time. For the first time ever. He will be separated from the Holy Spirit. And he knew he will be alone on that cross. And he also knew that the whole sin of the whole human race will come upon him. He who knew no sin would become sin. And it doesn't say would become sin if he didn't become sin, he became sin. He who knew no sin became sin. That was not something to look forward for. That's why he was sweating literally blood. Did you ever worry in such an extent that you were sweating blood? You can imagine how worried he was about the thing he needed to drink, the cup he needed to drink. Abram lifted his hand with a big sharp knife and he was going to sacrifice his son with such a broken heart. And as he lifted his hand and wanted to bring his hand down, the angel of the Lord said, stop! There's a couple of reasons why the angel said stop. He said stop the evil practices where you came from. Stop, it's not necessary. God did provide. And as he looked up, there was a male goat strangled in a thorn boot. 